there are so many things to remember to pack in your kit bag when you go to a race that it can be easy to forget something, which of course will be very frustrating if you've driven a long way to the event. So our tip is to make a checklist which you can tick off each and every time you go to a race. Here's what we put on it in order of importance. The first and most important thing that you need to pack is this small piece of card. It's a racing license. It needs to be signed on the back and have a photo of yourself on the front. Without this, you will not be allowed to start the race. Put that somewhere where you know it's going to be with you. I tend to put it into my wallet. The next most important thing to remember are your shoes, which are of course very personal to yourself in terms of size, type of cleat and also cleat position. Most other things of course you will be able to borrow from somebody if they've got a spare should you forget it. Now this is really important. British Cycling regulations state that you are not allowed to compete without a helmet and make sure you check it for wear and tear. It will keep you safe and racing smart. If you've got a helmet cover for it, place it in that prevent it getting scratched by anything else in your kit bag. And next up we've got our basic essentials in terms of clothing. And by that I mean shorts, socks, mitts, which you can put together. Make sure you've got a left and a right hand mitt. I've been to races before, I've had two left hand. And a jersey or two depending on the weather conditions. Short sleeve is essential. We'll get onto other clothing a little bit later on. Next up, we've got eyewear, shades, whatever you want to call them. Again, these are going to keep your eyes safe and sound. Not only do they look good, but they'll keep insects or any stones which fly out from rides in front away from your eyes. Put them again in a case if you've got them. Okay, in terms of extra pieces of clothing, there's quite a lot that you can take. So you'll need to look at the forecast and see what the conditions are before you need for the event. But you can have a range of undervests to keep you warm in various conditions. And then some extras like arm warmers, Leg warmers again can be bundled into a package to make sure that you've got them in pairs. And further to that, if it's getting particularly cold or going to look nasty for the race, some long fingered gloves, some kind of racing cap which will fit underneath your helmet, or if it's really cold, a skull cap which will keep your ears warm as well. Overshoes will keep the majority of spray off your feet keep them slightly warmer and then this is really important a rain jacket again you can get different thicknesses for different weather conditions but these can pack into your rear pocket just in case it starts raining during your event if you've pre-entered your event it might well be that you've received one of these through the post it's a race manual it gives you all the details that you need of the race HQ and other rules that you might have to adhere to during the event so make sure that you've got that in your kit bag as well most organisers will provide you with pins with which to put your numbers onto your jersey, but I always used to take an extra pot of pins just in case there weren't enough or none at all. The next item is another really important one, which all the pros will use, almost whatever the conditions really. If the sun's out, even if it's not particularly warm, you'll still want to apply some sun cream because you can be out there for some amount of time. And of course, when you're riding along, you're going to be going very fast and it might not feel as warm as it actually is. This is something that I didn't actually use myself, but it's chamois cream. And if you use it in training, then of course you're going to want to use it in a race as well. So if you're one of those people, put that into your kit bag. Next up, we've got a head unit. This one's a Garmin, but it can be any. Of course, it's useful to know how far around the circuit you are or how far you've got to go in your race. So put that safely. I normally used to put that into some kind of side pocket. Also, of course, you're going to need to take some bottles along with you. How many you take depends very much, again, on how long the race is and the weather conditions. At a minimum, I would say two and more if you've got somebody to hand them up for you. And to put inside the bottles, your favourite energy drink should be something that you're used to already. And the same thing goes for the bars and the gels that you're going to put in your pocket. One bar or one gel will suffice for an hour's criterion, but if you're on a long 100-mile race, you might want three or four bars and the same amount of gels. So that's about all you'll need for the race itself, but you need to think about what you might need afterwards. Some of the race HQs that you find will have showering facilities, and if that's the case, make sure you remember to bring some shower gel and a towel to dry yourself off afterwards with. If they don't, a simple flannel with some kind of body wash will mean that you can drive home without feeling sticky and sweaty. And once you've had your shower or you've washed yourself off, if it's been a cold and wet race, you're probably going to want to get into something warm pretty quickly. For me, the most important thing was a nice thick undervest to put against my skin and keep my upper body warm. 
Likewise, you can take a couple of jackets and you can even take some kind of thick tights, which is what we often see the professionals wear on the podium. And last but not least, we're going to want to take some kind of recovery drink. This is something that we'll often use even in training, so of course you want to use it in the races as well. Like the energy drink, make sure that it's something that you're used to. Don't try something new on the day. And once you've got all of that, you should pretty much have everything you need in a very full and quite heavy kit bag. But if you keep that checklist every time, it should mean that you never forget anything. Go to the British Cycling website to find out more about racing. Look at Get Into Racing, Categories, Membership. If you like what you see and feel that you're ready, then you'll need to become a British Cycling Gold or Silver member and take out a race licence.